10th of October 2019, Thursday, Sergey Baklakov and today again together with me, Ronald, Ronald from Texas. And again we are going outside of uh, St. Petersburg to so Leningrad region. Today we go to the town of Wyborg. I've been there already like twice, but both times I went there by train, today we go by car. Again, this is a uh, car sharing. We just take the car for uh, one day. Uh, it's 65 bucks, uh, 24 hours, and uh, the mileage is uh, 400 kilometers, which is like 250 miles. Okay, let's go, dude. The car we're taking today is a uh, Nissan, a Nissan Cash Guy. They already installed the winter tires here. We began our way through Nevsky Prospect, the main and most beautiful streets of the city. Navigator shows it's seven minutes longer than if we would go through another way. But I think it's worth this. This guy's suicide, man. I know. Those are like old Soviet uh, apartments, but they're in a kind of a cool location because from the balcony you can see, you have a nice view of the river and everything. The tall road of St. Petersburg, which is called Zapadny Skrasnoy Diameter, or just ZSD, what means Western Speed Diameter. But you know what is good about this car sharing? Somehow they have some kind of agreements with this road, and uh, if you drive, if you drive car sharing, you're going through for free. The car is already have transponder, so I just go through. And over here on the left, the St. Petersburg only, only skyscraper. Yes, lock the center. And uh, now it's in a fog, you know. You only see half of it. <laughs> yeah. The other half is in the clouds. We left the city of St. Petersburg. This is the very beginning of uh, Primorskaya Highway, Primorskaya Chasse, what means next to the sea, next to the sea highway. And our first stop going to be the city of Sestroresk, a small town and 30 kilometers from border of St. Petersburg. You see Olgino? There's a legend that here in Olgino, Leningrad region, there's an army of uh, Russian trolls working. Have you ever heard about that? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard about so -called it. So-called Olgino trolls. Yeah, I've heard about it. I didn't know, I didn't hear Olgino trolls, but I knew there were uh, supposed to be trolls in St. Petersburg somewhere, but that somewhere is old you know, right huh. now next to you yeah well you know I don't know whether that's true or not it's probably just uh, more uh, propaganda but whatever now we are already inside of the town of Sistra Resk uh, we go to the beach we are the only idiots idiots who came to the beach now. <laughs> Sistraretsk had stated just from the name, it is a town located in the estuary of uh, Sistra River. In 1714, by decree of Peter the Great, here was founded a big armory. In the same time, here was a Tsar's residence, as the residence in the uh, northern bank of Gulf of Finland. It was intentionally designed way more humble than Peterhof. Place located on a wide bank of Gulf of Finland later turned to the resorts. It happens after, in 1894, here was provided the railway. They figured out the result is going to be a probably a good idea for people wanting to come here through the railway and really the resorts appear to be a very successful idea people began buying lots of land and uh, 
um, built their summer houses. Keep in mind, it was before the USSR and socialism, so people were allowed to buy and own property. Here is still many of those architecturally interesting summer houses, designed mostly in the style of modern, uh, which is the world more known as Art Nouveau. Just for uh, several years around the resorts, all those houses formed the settlements which they called just the resorts in Russian Kurort, decided not to break their heads with the name. In the Soviet time, the government continued constructing sanatoriums and uh, pioneer camps here, most of them adapted for a new economics of Russia and uh, keep working now. The sand beach with lots of pine trees around keeps Sistraretsk as uh, still a very popular place for residents of St. Petersburg and uh, Leningrad region. Nowadays, the town of Sistraretsk itself grows up to 40,000 residents. This would be nice in the summertime. It is. Gulf of Finland. The next place we drive now, located in 6 kilometers from the beach, which is called Sestraretsky Rubesh. It's something like Sestraretsk uh, frontier. It's a complex of uh, fortifications for defense built in 1930s. We now got to the dead end, but navigator shells there's another 500 meters. What's this? You think wild roses? Yeah, they're definitely roses. There's no question about it. Yeah, look at the, these are uh, the rose hips, you know. And you can see the flowers on a couple of them, huh? And they got they got little uh, stickers. They got stickers all over them. These are roses. I've never seen a wild one before. Hmm. See, now Sergey looks like he's small, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sistraretsk frontier, located at the 37th kilometer of uh, Primorskaya Highway. It is founded here in 1938, when an old Soviet Finnish border used to be just in one kilometer from this fortifications, as uh, unfortunately the relationship between USSR and Finland wasn't that good back in those days because Stalin worried about Finnish border was so close to Leningrad. Already back then the Soviet Union predicted the invasion of Nazis and uh, that they uh, uh, can use Finland as one of their uh, sidekick front lines. So Stalin was asking Finland to move the border for 90 kilometers from Leningrad. There was offers many options for that, like renting or exchanging or even buying the lands. But all diplomatic negotiations failed and turned to a so-called winter war, which has lasted for about four months during the winter of 1939-1940. From the point of view of USSR, the war began once the sides never been able to provide the safety of Leningrad in a in a diplomatic way. So now here is a memorial complex of military fortifications with dotas, firing points, trenches and indoor museum with lots of uh, as a newer stuff but also real weapons and military items of those days that was uh, found with the uh, geology research. Seventeen uh, kilometers to Zelenogorsk. It's a uh, next stop, small town. Not sure what's there. I think Sergey knows more about it, but we'll find out. Okay, Zelenogorsk. Pum 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 pum. It seems like the city is completely in the in the forest. Zelenogorsk means the green town, which is literally so. The town is like all around the pine tree forest, 
by its nature it's similar to Sistraretsk because also located at the same coast of Gulf of Finland but just 25 kilometers north from Sistraretsk. The first mention of this settlement called Tiryoki was yet in 1548 as about Swedish settlement, but in 1721 by results of the Northern War became a part of Russian Empire. 200 years later, in 1918, by results of the first Russian-Finnish War, Tiryoki became a part of Finland and also was developed as the uh, resource. But after the final conflict between USSR and Finland, got back to the USSR again. Here is also a nice long beach in the summertime full of people, but an awesome just you know, enjoy pine tree forest all around so the nature, churches, park of culture and leisure, or the museum of retro cars called the Horsepower. This is the uh, Museum of Soviet Retro Cars, and uh, we'll see if it's not too expensive, we'll go inside and take a look. Two bucks each, I can afford that. Exposition starts with Moskvich cars. This is like the middle of 1950s. This is already the end of 1950s. 60s, 70s, was 2105. Because it's like 1970s. This is much older, 1961. A big amount of motorcycles. Here is also a N2 plane next to the museum. As a pilot, what do you, against, what, what do you know about a, a N2? Well, I know uh, that quite a few of these are brought into the States by collectors. And uh, I don't know how many are flying right now, but uh, it, can be, uh, it can be flown as an experimental category airplane because it's not actually certified. Um, fly any other way but as an experimental you're allowed to fly this thing and uh, yeah it's a it was a heavy transport plane in the Soviet Union I think some of them are still in use it was widely produced well, we're still driving on the uh, Primorskia highway and the next stop is the town of Primorsk. Primorsk is about like 70 kilometers from Zelenogorsk Absolutely beautiful roads that goes along to the sea. It's a Gulf of Finland. And it reminds me about Need for Speed game that I used to play like since I was a kid. Primorsk is another town next to Sistraretsk and Zelenogorsk along the Primorsk Highway and the Bank of Gulf of Finland. An old settlement founded yet in 1268 and was known under the name Bjorke. The place was influenced as by Sweden as by Novgorod land back in those days. When in 1719 Peter I conquered the town of Wyborg, it has also affected Primorsk, which is just 50 kilometers away from Wyborg. Nowadays, Primorsk is uh, one more beautiful and quiet place of Leningrad region with a population of uh, 5,000 people. The most interesting place here seems to be the Lutheran Church. Lutheran Church of St. Maria Magdalena, constructed in 1904 in the style of Northern Modern or Northern Art Nouveau by the project of Finnish architect Joseph Stanbeck. When Russian Tsar Nicholas II visited it in 1905, he donated the money they purchased an organ for this church, which later was made and Finnish fabric in the town of Kangasala. That organ then disappears. The legend says in the years of war, Finns hidden it somewhere in the woods around, but then forgot where exactly and still can't find it. The height of church is 37 meters. The height of spire is 60 meters. 1904. That's Close. locked, of course. Maybe next time. If closed now, yeah, let's go to Wilburg.
Only 40 kilometers left. Okay, Wyberg. Wyberg Castle. The city started with just castle. I have a whole video, even two videos about Wyberg. Check it out. Swedish, Finnish, Russian town of Wyborg, founded in 1293 as a castle on that small island by Torgils Knutsen, the regent of Swedish king. Wyborg Castle became an outpost to control the land of Karelian Isthmus. It is located 120 kilometers northwest from St. Petersburg and only 30 kilometers from nowadays border of Finland. In April of this year, 2019, I already was coming to Wyborg and showed you how you can come here for just one hour by high-speed train. Now you also got an idea of how you can come here by car through Primorskaya Highway. I already uh, filmed uh, two uh, detailed videos telling you about the town before, so for now it makes no sense to tell you again. You can just watch my older video. For now, just let me tell you, this is the second biggest city in Leningrad region with a very interesting history and uh, so-called northern modern, northern Art Nouveau architecture. Definitely uh, must visit. Now this is like the central streets of the historical city center of Wyborg. And uh, who it is named after, you think? Well, I would guess being the central street, as is the case with any central street in any city in Russia, it will be named after Lenin. Correct. Hmm. Look what you have sticking out of your cup. Well, they gave me, you know. Well, that's no excuse. This we should have stroke. refused it. It's a plastic straw. Don't you realize that this is going to end up in the nose of a sea turtle? Yeah, you're you right. You should feel very guilty. You're right. You're right. I'm a monster. <laughs> Moose. It's actually the symbol of Leningrad region. And it is staying right next to Alta Library, which is the central library of the city. I was making a separate video about this, but uh, now I can't not to get there again to show to Ronald. The book storage. Okay. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it was a pretty saturated day today. Sestrarezk, Zelenogorsk, Primorsk, Vyborg. And uh, all of this in continue of my course that I've got this year for uh, making more videos all over Russia, not only in any certain place. All this was like a quick looks to uh, the places and the things that I can get back and film in detail. Next year, a really epic journey. All the way across Russia and back. So stay tuned and keep watching.